Welcome to Enjoying Everyday Life. You know, today is Independence Day. Our great nation has set aside a day to celebrate freedom. Today, my husband Dave, Ginger Stocky, and I will talk about the value of freedom and what we can all do to protect it. But before we get started, let's take a look at how our freedom began, where our country is today, and what the future holds for you and me. The United States of America, history's boldest experiment in freedom. For the first time, a nation was built with the belief that God was supreme to government and that fundamental rights did not come from the dictate of a king, but from the heart of the King of Kings. Our freedom has led to a flourish of inventions and discoveries like no other nation in history. And out of our abundance comes generosity. When the world suffers calamity, the United States responds. We give more in aid and relief than most of the world nations combined. America has been so blessed, and we are called to be a blessing. But what would our founders see if they could look on our republic today? Would they see a people committed to preserving the freedoms that they and so many others gave their lives to protect? Or a people indifferent and unaware of the freedoms that are slowly being taken away? Would they see a people boldly speaking the truth in a culture bound by political correctness? Or a people so desensitized and complacent that we no longer know what truth is? We are a nation at risk, and the problems we face are very real. The erosion of our morality and godliness only weakens the strength of our freedoms. Now, more than ever, the body of Christ in America must rise above politics and unite on the principles found only in God's Word. And it starts with you. God's hand moved in miraculous ways to make this nation a possibility. We are responsible to take care of what He has given to us. We must look back and remember in order to move forward. Each of us needs to educate ourselves about our nation's rich history, so we will not only know where we came from, but make wise decisions for our future. And the decisions you make are important. God has given us the opportunity and the privilege to let our voices be heard when we vote. The world is changing more rapidly than ever before. Now is the time to once again seek God's face and pray for the United States of America. Pray for our leaders. Pray that the hearts of people all across this nation will turn back to Him. God still has a plan a hope, and a future for the United States. And He chose you to be part of that plan. Will you make a decision to help set America back on course, to be a nation that continues to send the gospel all over the world? Well, you know, today is a day of celebration, and we celebrate lots of things in our traditions. We celebrate birthdays and anniversaries and weddings and baptisms and all kinds of things. But today is a celebration about freedom. Certainly, the 4th of July is about a lot more than fireworks and picnics. And I think maybe some people don't even really know why we do celebrate today. They don't have any idea, or nor do they take time to thank God for the freedoms that we have here. And we need to realize that every place in the world doesn't have the kind of freedoms that we have. But if freedom is not protected, it will be lost. So my husband Dave, of course, is here, and, and Ginger, and it's good to have Dave on the show today. Thank you. And um, Dave knows a lot about American history and a lot about why people came here originally. So 
what about the Fourth of July Day? Why, why do we celebrate it? What, what does it relate back to? Well, first of all, we've got to realize that uh, uh, Europe was coming out of the Dark Ages, so there was many, many things that were happening in Europe that God was shaping to prepare the way of America. Yeah. because the Bible was hidden away yeah. for for a thousand years from the year 500 to almost 1500 it was locked up it was locked up it was locked away and only the uh, only the priest could uh, look at look at the Bible and, and uh, all of a sudden things started popping when the Bible come uh, come on the scene when uh, Wycliffe uh, translated the Bible into English and then all of a sudden Luther and the Gutenberg press and yeah. many Bibles were then produced in 10 years. There was, it went from 50,000 Bibles to 10 million Bibles. Wow. So and there so, were a lot of doors opening there. So it's yeah. pretty exciting. Oh, well, it was great. Dave, what, what were the things that those original founders of America wanted to create in our nation? Why did they want a new nation? What did they want to see happen? Yeah. They wanted people to know the Word of God that they knew, that they right. had burning in their hearts. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when, and also they wanted religious freedom because they were being sorely oppressed in Europe. And so they came here, they came here so they could have that religious freedom and, and they could share with other people in, in the world that, that nobody had known about un until that time. And, and that, so don't you think it's it. safe to say too that when, when they got here and God was being put first again, that then the creativity yeah. began oh, to come yes. back. Then the creativity and then really there was all increased. these ideas about how yeah. people could could grow and prosper and, yeah. and they could have cities and build things. And yeah. so it's kind of amazing that when God is not on the forefront, mm -hmm. that all creativity begins yeah. to die. Yeah. And when when he is put first, you know, then that's not the case. So, exactly. So that's very good. Everything is shut down. Uh, without the Word of God, everything becomes dormant and shut down. And so there's no, there's no life. Nothing Amen. is, everything is, there's darkness. That's why they call it the dark ages. To me, that freedom means that, first of all, we can worship God freely. And then also, people came here because they wanted to have an opportunity to express themselves in different ways and to enjoy something that we now call free enterprise that we tend to be losing a lot of that and we don't want to do that. Freedom is something that isn't cheap and we have to do what we need to do to keep that. And Dave, I know in the, in the conferences you talk a lot about what our responsibility is and, and what we need to do and it's really not that complicated. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Our, uh First of all, uh, I'd like to say a little something about freedom. Freedom, yeah. freedom is uh, uh, defined as uh, one's ability to live as they desire within the confines of the law. In That's other good. words, they have to stay within the confines of the law, but right. they can do whatever they want yeah. within the confines of the law. The way I say this is the only way to know our responsibility is the biblical way. The Israelites lost everything when they forgot what God had given them. Right. When we forget what, what, uh, what our forefathers did for us and what, what they gave us, and it was based on godly principles, then we're, we're susceptible to lose it. And the proof is in the pudding, so to speak, that we are losing it as, as a result of our not knowing or having the knowledge that we need to have to maintain it, to keep it. One of the things that I, I find is always a great reminder is to put myself in other people's shoes. And it's so easy when we visit other countries because mm -hmm. there are so many wonderful nations out there, but m most of them don't have something special, that spark of freedom that we right. have. And right. to think about all of the nations where Christians are persecuted or where um, freedom and, and just equality does not exist. Right. We have to remember how blessed we are right. and, and fight for that. Or to be in a country where people are born into a caste system exactly. where they can never rise above what their parents right. did. Right, an automatic lid put on I them. mean, how, how defeating is right. that? It's, it's terribly defeating. Right. Uh, but just to make sure that people know, uh, we're not at a dead end. There are things that can be done. Mm -hmm. Thank God, every day can be a new beginning. There, it's never too late. Right, never too late to begin again. And so, people watching today, if they're saying, "Well, you know, what can we do then? What mm -hmm. What is my responsibility?" Mm -hmm. uh, just real quickly, tell us what that would be. Well, let me quote first quote a couple of our, our forefathers. Uh, Thomas Jefferson said, "If a nation expects to be ignorant and free, 
it expects what never was and never will be. That's good. So it, it can, uh, you can't be free and ignorant too. Right. So you have to be knowledgeable, and if you're knowledgeable of who you are and where you came from and how you got to where you are, then you can do, do something about right. it and yeah. you can maintain. Our first president, George Washington, said, reason and experience both forbid us to expect that national morality can prevail in exclusion of religious principles. Yeah. So without religious principles, uh, we can't, we can't, uh, our national morality cannot prevail. And then the third thing is uh, our second president, uh, Adams, said, uh, our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate for the government of any other. So it's, if it's wholly inadequate for the government of any other, only for a moral and religious people, then that means that Christians are responsible for this country and for this Constitution. Mm -hmm. Because if it's only, if it's, it's, it can only work with a, in a Christian nation, with Christian people, then the, the unbeliever cannot, it cannot work with the unbeliever. And you know, there's always good and there's always evil. It's been there since Adam and Eve were in the garden. The biggest problem that we have, you talked about Israel forgetting God, mm -hmm. but today we have a movement from many sources to completely get rid of God, yeah. starting with getting God out of the schools yeah. and, you know, just er everywhere you turn, people are wanting to do away with this and that and that and something yeah. else. And first of all, God's not going away. He's yeah. in charge of everything. But the more people ignore God, the worse their conditions are going right. to be. And so as believers now, we have in some ways caused, but in many ways inherited a huge problem. And so we can stand around and say, well, it's not my fault, but nonetheless, we are the only ones that can fix it. So the things that we need to do is have a very strong relationship with God right. and not blend in, but stand out. Not in a religiously obnoxious way, but in a godly way. We need to let our light shine right. and stand up for God. Right. We need to pray, mm -hmm. but that's not all we need to do. When we pray, God normally shows us something to do. So when he shows you what to do, then you need to do that. And that means stand up against evil and unrighteousness, little ways, in big ways, let your voice be made known and vote in every single election, no matter how insignificant it seems to be, mm -hmm. vote in the elections and be informed about who you're voting for. Don't right. just vote to say you went to the poll and did it, but be informed about who you're voting for, and that means you got to do a little bit of work, but we've made it pretty easy for people, especially in major elections, because now all they need to do is get on our website and we can point them to places where they can get all kinds of information right. about the people that are running. As a result of our history and our foundations being based on the Word of God, Charles Finney, great man of God, great minister of God, uh, who was used uh, in a great way in the Second Great Awakening right before the Civil War, became a minister. And by he, his desire was not to become a minister, but become a lawyer. And he became a minister by reading law, by <laughs> re reading the law books, because each law had a scripture that backed up that law. And so, our history is totally a godly history, and our forefathers right. were, were godly men. And so, and all of our laws are based on the Word of God. Right. And so, if people you know, are successful in what they think is getting rid of God, which, right. like I said, he's not going away. But, for example, prayer was taken out of schools right. and the Ten Commandments were taken out of schools and, you know, people are trying to get rid of those things. And Separation so, of church and state. Yeah. So if that happens, then the other thing that would have to happen is then people are going to want to start changing the laws right. to things that no longer include God's Word. And so we can't expect to have a free nation if we remove everything that our freedom was based on. It's going to have to turn around. But you know, we're gonna be back in just a minute. But right now, we're gonna go out on the streets to find out what freedom means to a lot of different people. So check this out. It's, it's really hard for me to explain that. It's, very, it's, it's, it's not a simple question. Freedom is everything, you know? feel like, like the wind, you know, you can go anywhere. Be able to roam and do things that I need to do to, su to survive. Like for, for example, freedom to go out and work for who I want. I am free to proclaim Jesus' name wherever I go. Freedom is not free, 
but I believe that um, living in this country, you have the ability to truly go out and be the best person that you can be. To worship um, Jesus freely without any restriction. You're letting go of everything and you're just, you're trusting God to, to be able to move in your life and you have no worries anymore, you're free. Freedom to me means being able to live where I want to, um, socialize with whoever I want to, and you know, just being comfortable with doing whatever I want to do. Just having the freedom to express yourself in whatever way it is, if it's through music, or if it's through uh, ministry, or if it's through sports, or whatever, uh, we live in a place where we can do that. My ancestors, they fought for my right to be free and everything, and I thank them for doing that because who knows what this world would be like if they hadn't have done that then. I come from another country, so this country is, is freedom. I'm free to know that whatever mess up that I do today, Jesus has already died, already cleaned it up for me, and I'm free. I'm free to ask for forgiveness, and I'm free to be forgiven. And that's what freedom is to me. Well, obviously, people have a lot of different ideas about what freedom is. I think that I understand what freedom is because I was in great bondage and God has set me free. And I don't think there is really any true freedom without having a relationship with Christ in your life. I think that that's the only thing that really truly sets us free. And freedom does not come without a price. And we tend to forget that. We forget a lot of things, actually. I say often we remember what we should forget and forget what we should remember. God has done many miracles in my life, and I'm sure in yours, and, and I want to remember what he's done. And the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy 8 that we should not forget the Lord, or we will accept ideals contrary to his principles if we do that. So, Dave, I know you talk a lot in our conferences about remembering what God mm -hmm. has done. You want to talk about that a little bit and then tell us some of the things that God has done. Well, you know, in, in the Bible, throughout the Bible, it talks about don't forget, remember, recount, recall, take heed. Mm -hmm. And all those are, are vitally important words, and they're in there thousands and thousands and thousands yeah, of times because God wants us to remember all the great and mighty things that he's mm -hmm. done. Not only does he want us to remember, he, he commanded Israel. He mm -hmm. commanded them, and he made it a law in Israel to remember his statutes and his precepts. So he was basically saying if you don't remember, yeah. you'll, you'll drift off in a wrong you direction will. and get in trouble. Yeah, and that's exactly what they did. When they forgot, they would drift off, and they'd start worshiping idols, and they'd start doing things that other nations did, and uh, forgetting God, totally forgetting God. And so that's, that was God's reason for them to remember, so that they would totally, rely, totally realize. And that's why eventually they wanted a king, because other nations had a king. They wanted mm -hmm. a king instead of, you know, and... and uh, they forgot how much God yeah. had taken care and of And God didn't want them to have a king because he was their king. He well, was, even for us, you, you know, know, if we start forgetting what God has done in our lives, we start to get a bad attitude. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the greatest way in the world to stay happy mm -hmm. is to have a thankful attitude about what God is doing and not get a grumpy attitude about what He's not doing. Right. Well, and, you, take, you take for granted what you don't remember yeah. the history of, yeah. what you don't know the price for. Yeah. Right. If something comes to you too easily, you take it for granted. Exactly. That's exactly right. And w what were some of those things, Dave, that... that we just, looking back, know God's hand definitely made that happen because without his hand, America wouldn't be the nation right. that it is. Well, I mean, there was, there was miracles that, were, that God created in this nation or caused in this nation. Uh, you know, when, when George Washington and American troops were, were moving into Valley Forge, um, it was, uh, that's where, that was their wintering spot. And uh, when they moved in there, they were in severe, severe condition because they had... They had their clothes were almost totally gone. They had no hats, no coats, no shoes, and uh, many of them didn't even have a shirt on their back. And so it was this was in freezing cold conditions. Uh, and their uh, they said that the trail you could follow the trail by the blood that the men were leaking out of their feet from from the severe conditions. And these these were these were the things that were the sacrifices that were being made at that time to fight for our freedom. For, to fight that for we're our celebrating freedom. today. To fight for our freedom. And, and there was like nine thousand of them that were uh, 
uh, approaching Valley Forge, and, and uh, it, was, it was a horrible, horrible time, and, and it looked like a hopeless situation. Plus, they were in a, in a mode of starvation because they had very little to eat. And so God miraculously performed uh, three different miracles <clears throat> in that particular uh, situation, and one of the uh, miracles was Skykill River was boiling, seemed to be boiling, and one of the soldiers recognized, that's fish. And as he recognized it, uh, he said, uh, get the pitchforks, get the shovels. <laughs> and these fish, the, they're called chad, they were actually swimming upstream at the wrong uh, migratory time of the year. And so they got the shovels and the pitchforks and shoveled them on the shore. Wow. Thousands <laughs> of these fish on the shore, and all of a sudden, they had plenty of food wow. where they were had wow. been starving before. They had plenty of food. So that was one of the miracles. And, and uh, the next miracle was uh, a Prussian veteran soldier uh, came riding into Valley Forge and offered his service. Well, he was a guy that was, helped train uh, soldiers. And, and uh, the uh, colonial army was, was really in pretty bad condition as far as training. Uh, George, General George Washington, who was a great, great leader, had led the men, and he built character in them, but there wasn't time really to train them. And so, so a lot of them were just farmers. And, yeah, they were, know, they were kind of a ragtag, you know. They didn't know anything and, about war. And so this man came in and trained them and got them to work as one unit, and, and they gained confidence in themselves. And so when they left Valley Forge, they were a fighting unit like they never had before and wow. so it was very important that was the second miracle and the third was uh, the French joined the Americans at that time suddenly joined the Americans and that meant that a lot of troops were going to be coming in and a lot of money which they needed because they, there was a shortage of money and mm. therefore a shortage of food and so as the French joined that provided the money and the food that they wow. needed and and also the troops extra troops that they needed so those three miracles and that one incident brought uh, a lot of great uh, wow. need to, to the uh, So it's to just Washington proof, industry. really, that the freedoms that we enjoy, mm -hmm. we would not have had it not been for God's intervention. Yeah, exactly. And so uh, America being birthed and the freedom we have was a God thing, just not a coincidence, just right. not right. something a bunch of people put together. And so if it if it was put together by God, then obviously it's not going to work without God. Right. And one of the things that I've just really had a burning passion to get across to people is that every single thing that God asks us to do or not to do is for our benefit. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not any, God doesn't need us to no. do them. It's like if we put him first, it's going to help us. It it's us. not going to, mm -hmm. doesn't change anything for God. It's going to help right. us. And I just really would love to see all of America just returned to putting God first and, and see our government really magnify God and, and put him and his principles first and, yeah. and try to keep things preserved. Well, we know that nothing can stay the same and we were always growing and changing, but going away from God is not growth. That's right. I mean, right. That, that's, not, that's not what you know, we need to do. If anything, we need to have deeper Right. Yeah. Relationships with God. And God's word tells us when it when it defines freedom, it says that we will be slaves to whatever we we focus on. Right. Yeah, and, exactly. and in America, we're focusing on a lot of different things that we think is freedom because we think it's yeah. what we want. Yeah. But instead, it is enslaving us. Right. And so if if we can allow ourselves to really understand the freedom that God wants right. us to have, mm -hmm. it will once again change our nation right. but but as you've been saying if if we don't remember where we've been mm -hmm. we're not going to know where we're going right. and i think that's what we're in so much right. danger of we we have to look back and look forward yeah, yeah. that's exactly right you, know, you really uh, can't look forward properly without looking back. Uh, woodrow wilson our 28th president president said this he said a, a nation that doesn't remember what it was yesterday doesn't know what it is today nor what it's trying to do right. it's lost and so what happens when, when a nation's like that? Somebody else leads it around basically right. to do whatever they tell it to do. And we don't know whether it's right or wrong because we have no knowledge of what is right or wrong. Exactly. That's true. And, so. and, and we are 
going to make mistakes along the way. Yeah. We're, we're a bunch of yeah, sure. very failing humans, oh, yeah, sure. and, and our nation made a lot of mistakes <laughs> along not the perfect, way. perfect, you know. Yeah, absolutely. There issues. But we know that God has a plan for our nation because right. we've seen his hand yeah. so firmly and so strongly and so many on of it. those mistakes we've corrected over the years by right. because we've listened to God, right. we've known what was right, and we That's began true. to do the yeah. right thing. So yeah, where do we go from here? What, what do we do now with all this information? Now all we have to do is remember. We have to learn. We have to be educated in who we are, how we got to where we are, and also we cannot be deceived if we know uh, like like uh, Benjamin Franklin said, a nation of well-informed men who have been taught to know and prize the rights that God has given them cannot be enslaved. Yeah. Well, and thank God we have some information that can help people understand these principles. And so we have a few things that we would like to just wrap the program up, program up with by reminding you to do. Today is a day about freedom and all the wonderful things that God has done. And so you can educate yourself. You can download the Declaration of Independence and read it. Most people don't even know it. You can get with a couple of friends and pray together for this nation. The Bible tells us if we'll humble ourselves and repent of our sins, we call out to God that he will heal our land. And today we have, a, I think, a very special offer for you. The first book that Dave read that really <laughs> impassioned him was a book called America's Providential history. Someone gave it to him. He read it just so he could say, I read a little bit of your book. And, and I remember still when he first started reading these books, he would come to me so excited and share things. And, and many times he would come and he'd be weeping trying to share these things with me because he didn't realize all that God had done in this country. And it mm -hmm. brought him to a place of yeah. repentance for his inactivity and not doing some of the things that he should have done. And so we're offering you the, that book today, America's Providential History and also a DVD called The Future of America. So we want you to have a, a great day. Enjoy your picnic. Enjoy your fireworks. But above all, remember what this day is really yeah. about. God bless you and have a great day. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. The proceeding was paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.